What is going on? I'm meteorologist Jonathan Kegis. This is another edition of Tropics Watch, and we are, of course, thankfully, nearing the end of hurricane season, officially ending on December 1st, and there are thankfully no indications that we are going to see any extremely late season development or post-season development. The weather has been kind of nasty, though, in parts of the southern Caribbean, Trinidad and Tobago, parts of the Windward Islands through Central America. Nothing organized tropically there, but we are going to take a look at why it has been so stormy there for us living there. And then we're going to recap the season and talk about, at least by the numbers, if was it above or below average. Of course, we know how bad and destructive it was for a select few areas. Puerto Rico, of course, with Fiona. And then Florida with both Ian and Nicole. And then Belize also getting a nasty hurricane this year as well. So it has been rough, even though it got off to a very, very slow start. It's all about, of course, how it finishes, unfortunately. The good news is there is no new development expected over the next five days. So we're going to end the season again quietly in terms of no extra development to close out. November and start December, this little thing in the center of your screen is not tropical. It's a kind of a good indication about how the, the difference is between a tropical cyclone and a mid-latitude cyclone. This is a mid-latitude cyclone. You see that swirl there. It is a very big storm, but you see the cold front. These storms right here, there's a front attached to it. When you have a tropical system, they are not frontal in nature. They are not generated by difference in temperature rather than, of course, the warm water of the ocean. So that is non-tropical in nature. It's not expected to become tropical as it kind of drifts and just kind of batters the ocean there of the North Atlantic. On to the tropical satellite here. Again, we are seeing things kind of pipe down a little bit, if you will, in Trinidad and Tobago, but we do have another little wave here sliding through. We also have more thunderstorms over Central America towards Nicaragua, getting into Honduras, Belize. We had that yesterday as well as uh, we moved through Saturday. It's been kind of rough here through the ABC Islands as well in Northern South America. And the reason because it's been that way is because of the intertropical convergence zone. We have the trade winds coming out of the Northeast and then we have the Southeast winds. They move together and kind of force up those thunderstorms. It's something that's there the entire year. It's an area that we would look for tropical development every now and then if we can get a cluster of thunderstorms to be isolated. We talked in last week's video that we had the potential anyway for some tropical development last weekend. Did not thankfully come into fruition. All of those thunderstorms stayed well within the ITCZ. It really doesn't matter much. It wasn't going to be a strong system by any means, but... We still had the same kind of impacts with the very heavy rain, so we we're still dealing with that flooding, mudslide threat, places like Central America, Nicaragua, Honduras, and then, of course, into Trinidad and Tobago and parts of the Windward Islands. We're going to continue to watch that for you. Here is the recap. Again, with no new development expected over the next five days. Again, we can get development in December. There's no indications that's going to happen. We're going to go over that coming up a little bit later, but... Through right now, we are going to end it on the end storm with Nicole. Again, that was the devastating storm that impacted the east coast of Florida so very hard uh, post-Ian. We ended the season with three straight hurricanes. What made it even crazier was the fact that we ended it with three straight hurricanes in November. So just insane there. It's been a long time since that's happened. It's only the third time that has ever happened. And you see it there. The strongest two storms of the season were Fiona and Ian, both reaching Category 4 status. Ian nearly becoming a Category 5 about a day before it made that devastating landfall in southwest Florida. Here is the map of all of the storms that have developed to date. Again, if we get a storm in December, hopefully not. Again, it's unlikely that that happens. It has happened before. It probably will happen again, but there are no indications that is going to happen uh, this season. But here are all of the storms. We had a couple of kind of tropical depressions die out in the Atlantic. We had Hermine that rolled off of Africa, quickly reached tropical storm status, and then fizzled out. Gaston impacting the Azores. We had Danielle become that very large hurricane. 
Martin became a hurricane in the North Atlantic, too, becoming one of the northernmost North Atlantic hurricanes on record. Here is Earl, developed north of the Leeward Islands and then strengthened to the east of Bermuda, becoming a Category 2 hurricane up in the North Atlantic as well. Fiona, of course, rolled through the Lesser Antilles, the Leeward Islands, as a tropical storm, then became a hurricane as it got very close to Puerto Rico. It brought us a ton of of heavy rains. When I say close to Puerto Rico, I'm talking about a landfall, but it brought us the devastating impacts as we were on the right side and just pushed all of that tropical moisture into the island. Then it moved over the Dominican Republic, was very devastating for our friends there, into the Turks and Caicos, and then strengthened as it passed to the west, becoming that very powerful category for storm to the west of Bermuda. Then we had Julia and Bonnie, in South America, uh, excuse me, in Central America, we had Lisa make landfall as a Category 1 hurricane in Belize. We had Carl kind of do its thing in the Bay of Campeche as well. Potential Tropical Cyclone 4 never materialized, but brought beneficial rain to South Texas early on in the season. And then the big ones. Of course, we had Colin early on in the year. That really didn't do much. It was that very short-lived 12-hour tropical storm that ramped up real quick over South South Carolina and then fizzled out as it kind of paralleled the South Carolina-North Carolina coastline. Alex was early on as well. It developed in the season, so we did not have a preseason storm this year, and then just kind of worked its way out over the North Atlantic. And then Nicole and Ian are the two big ones Unfortunately for the United States, Ian was the powerhouse that devastated the Fort Myers area and areas in southwest Florida, caused a ton of flooding in central Florida, chewed up the coast and destroyed a lot of the infrastructure along east Florida as well. I mean, Orlando, we're still dealing with flooding along the St. Johns River as a result of Hurricane Ian. So just crazy amounts of flooding, of course, through central Florida. Absolutely devastating. Uh, and then that set the stage, of course, for very large Hurricane Nicole. It wasn't all that powerful in terms of the wind. It was the size that helped to generate the devastating storm surge that came in unopposed to the east coast of Florida and did all of that damage uh, to the east coast as well. In terms of the season by the numbers, the forecast from NOAA, was to have 14 to 21 named storms. Got on the low range of that forecast with Nicole. So we had 14 storms. That is an average season in terms of the number of storms to develop. We had slightly above average in terms of the amount of hurricanes. We had eight hurricanes form. Seven is the average. Six to 10 was forecast by the Hurricane Center. Major hurricanes, were three to six were forecast. The average is three. We ended up with two. That was, of course, Ian and Fiona. Uh, it doesn't matter really how many that form. It matters who is impacted. Um, the seasonal ACE forecast was forecast to be 180. We were way below that. Uh, ACE is the amount of energy produced by the storms on average we have 123 ace units we ended up with 95 so in terms of the intensity of the hurricane season again as a whole it wasn't that intense as a whole i don't know if uh, if that highlights the it only takes one mantra that we say every single year to a t because when you look at it from an ace perspective, it was not an intense season. But we had a couple of very intense hurricanes impact land, and that's all it takes. It, that number really doesn't matter because it just matters who is impacted. And, of course, it was a very, very bad year for Florida. This crazy hurricane stat, though, again, it took forever to get the season started. And... We knew it likely wasn't going to last that way. It was, I think, well forecast that this was likely going to be a back-heavy season. August, we had zero hurricanes. We had zero named storms in August. And then we had three hurricanes in November. 
So just a crazy stat to end the hurricane season. All right, I mentioned earlier in the video that we would take a look at December storms. Uh, they are rare. They have happened before. And going back to the satellite era, era 1966, so we can really get a good gauge on when storms are out at sea because unless you have a ship there or something there you really don't know that it's out there until you had satellites so only seven have developed since 1966 in the month of december so it is really rare although we were impacted by olga in puerto rico in 2007 you see lily also impacted us as well in puerto rico the only tropical system to make landfall in the month of December in the contingent United States, the lower 48, was an unnamed tropical system. Back in 1925, that made landfall in southwest Florida. So the only state to have a landfalling tropical system in the United States was Florida. So crazy. I mean, would you expect anything less? It sticks out like a sore thumb with bodies of water on all but one side of the state. And again, no indications that that is going to happen. If this is, in fact, the last Tropics watch of the season, again, the hurricane season ends on December 1st. Thank you guys for trusting us. Thank you guys for tuning in every Sunday. And when we did the special ones, when there was something threatening, we really appreciate it. Hopefully, we don't talk again this season, and I mean that just because that means there's not going to be any more development this season. If something does develop postseason, we're going to jump right back on here and let you know about it. And, of course, you can find us here June 1st and hopefully no earlier. We'll talk about the—we will be earlier than June 1st because we'll talk about the outlook. What I mean by hopefully we don't talk any earlier than that is hopefully there's no preseason pre development coming— next season either but we will be here for you guys and i appreciate your trust here with the pinpoint weather team and new six and appreciate the conversations that we've had along the way this season i hope for the areas that were impacted by these devastating storms that recovery goes fast and that everything goes well for you guys i again i know the three areas in particular the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, the Turks and Caicos were devastated, this southern end, by Fiona, Central America, and, of course, Florida. Um, it was a very, very rough year. So I hope you guys are doing well, and I hope you guys are recovering well and that everything goes very, very quickly and that we do not have to deal with a season like this for a very long time. Thank you very much. Again, if you want to continue the conversation, please post that in the comments below or hit me up on Twitter. That's going to be at Jonathan Kegis. Thank you guys so much again for putting your trust in us. It has been an awful season again for the second half of the year. We will catch you next season. Thank you again for watching Tropics Watch.